In this video, I'll show the InDesign script export pages to subfolders. This is similar to the script export named pages. See links in the description for more about that script. The difference is this script outputs all pages the same file name, but each to a different subfolder. I'll demonstrate the script in Mac OS. It works the same on Windows. Here's the document I used in the video for the script export named pages. This pretend job is supposed to be real estate flyers. Don't judge the lack of design. I just tossed this together to demonstrate. Each page is a different property and agent. You get the idea. To name folders, the script pulls content from each page. To know the text to use for the folder name, the script looks for a paragraph or character style, or gets it from an image name. I'll start with a paragraph style. This document uses paragraph styles agent and property, assigned like so. I already have the script in the scripts panel. For help adding scripts to InDesign, see the link in the description for another video that shows the steps. In the list, select the script, export pages to subfolders. Double click to run it. The interface is divided into four sections. File name, folder, output, and settings to save and reuse the options currently set. First, enter the desired file name for all pages that will output. This value defaults to the InDesign document name without extension. You can change it to any text legal in file names. To restore the default, click the button Reset. Next, select the root folder where subfolders will be created and the pages are output. This defaults to the location of the InDesign document. To choose another folder, Click the button Root and navigate to the desired folder. The path to the folder appears beside the button. It's possible to set a folder as the default each time the script runs. To the right of the folder path is a button with three dots. Click that and another window opens. Here, recent folders are listed. Click one and it becomes the output folder. Below the list is Default Output Folder. Click the button Set Default and choose the desired folder. The path to the default folder is displayed. Now whenever the script runs, the output folder is the same. Or leave the default None and it's always where the document is located. Next, choose the subfolder name method. Choices are Paragraph Style, Character Style, Object Style, or Image Name. I'll start with Paragraph Style and set it to Agent. For this first example, I'll export all pages to print PDFs. Click OK and exporting begins. This document is only three pages, so it goes quick. For a document hundreds of pages in complex design, exporting takes more time. Here you can see the result. Three folders, each the name of the agent, and each with a single PDF in the folder, all the same file name. The script got the folder names from the text assigned the agent paragraph style. Now let's do it by the paragraph style property. The file names are the same, but the folders are now the first line of text assigned the style property. This entire block of text is assigned the style property, but the script only uses the first line. If you want the address from the second line, it needs another style, either paragraph or character. It doesn't have to look any different. It just needs a separate style so the script can detect it. In the Paragraph Style panel, duplicate the property style. Name it Address and base it on the property style. That way, if the property style changes, this one changes with it. For this to work, I have to update the address lines to use the new style. 
Now run the script again and use the style address. There it is, three folders each named the address. Another way to do this is with a character style. Then you can be even more specific, for example, the street name only. Create a character style named street. Leave the styling settings none. It doesn't have to look any different. The purpose is just so the script can detect content that uses it. Now go through each page and set the street name to this character style. Run the script again, and this time, use the character style Street. There it is. Now let's name folders by image. I'll come back to object style after that. In the links panel, you can see the image names. I've named the agent photo with last name, comma, first name. Run the script and set the method to image name. Now each folder is named by the agent photo file name. But wait, there are two images on each page. How does the script know which image to use? Stacking order. See here in the layers panel. The agent photo is higher in the stacking order. By default, the script uses the first image it finds, starting from the top and moving down the stacking order. This also applies to naming by text styles, if there are more than one element assigned the style. To go from bottom to top instead, use the script option Reverse Search. And the script uses the property image names instead. But sometimes relying on the stacking order isn't enough. Complex layouts might prevent this approach from working well. Instead, use the subfolder name method, object style. This also uses an image name, but which image to use is determined by the object style assigned to it. Go to the object styles panel and create a new one. Call it folder name. Make it based on none and leave it as is. We don't need to change how the element looks. I'll assign the new object style to the agent photos. Or maybe these frames already have an object style assigned. If that's the case, don't create a new style. Instead, use the existing object style to identify the images. The last run of the script, I used image name and search reversed. So it went from bottom to top. That used the property image because they're lower in the stacking order. I'll run the script again, and still with search reversed. But this time, choose Object Style, and select Folder Name. Now folders are named by images assigned the object style, which are the agent photos. And it's back to named by agent image instead of property. Now suppose nothing on the page is what you want for a folder name. Then add it to the page. Just don't print it. The script sees everything on the page even non-printing content. To demonstrate, I have another layer. This layer I've unchecked print layer, so none of this layer appears on the final output. To this layer, I've added a text frame on each page with the desired folder name. This choice is a combination of the agent's last name and the street name. Just for example, it could be anything, like a product code or other details. Next, I'll create a new paragraph style folder name. It doesn't have to be based on anything, and it doesn't have to change how the text is formatted. Now assign the new style to these non-printing paragraphs. Run the script, and select the paragraph style folder name. There it is. So far I've shown exporting print PDFs. There are other formats as well. Interactive PDF, JPEG, or PNG. The options for each should be clear. When exporting PDFs, there is also the option to export single pages 
or groups of two, for front and back. I have another document to demonstrate. These are mock business cards, two-sided. Page one is the front, then the back on page two, and so on. Odd pages are fronts, even pages are the backs. Select the option Front plus Back, and each PDF exported is two pages. Last is the section Settings. To save the options currently set, click the button Save. There are options to include the file name and or output folder. If unchecked, these always start with the default values. Enable either of these, and when the settings are loaded, the values saved override the defaults. Download the script and give it a try. See the link in the description. Any problem with the script, or ideas for others, leave a comment. All suggestions are welcome. If this solution works for you, like the video, and subscribe to this channel. It keeps more videos coming.